Hello and welcome to Leo's Lock Pad. Um, we've got a kick cylinder today. Um, I'll show you this in a minute. Um, this is a. Uh, going to do. Um, I think we call it now. We're going to. It's a quick um, demonstration on how to make um, a challenge lock without most of the tools uh, a lot of us pickers have for making pins. Um, before we get on, um, if you're into lock picking and you're interested, you want to come and join us, come and check out www.uklocksport.co.uk and if you're interested in what you see on my channel and the content, please that hit that subscribe button, that bell icon, as I make two, three videos per week from making locks to picking challenge locks to anything lock related really. So let's get on. So what I've done is, um, this was a stock kick. Uh, all standard pins in it, standard drivers, standard key pins, nothing special about it. And there's nothing special about the bitter neither. Um, now I picked this before I changed it and it took me about 30 seconds to get in. Because it, it's such an easy lock. Because it's got a nice open keyway. Um, as you can see, really easy to get uh, your pick in there with the pins. There's nothing special about it. It's not, it's not uh, paracentric or anything. Um, but this is to demonstrate how you can make um, a challenge lock without actually making your own pins. You can use other pins from other locks um, and get yourself uh, a nice uh, setup. So if you're, if you're interested in making challenge locks but you don't have the tools, um, stick around and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. All I'll do is we'll pick it first and it isn't become now, it's uh, very tricky to pick. Uh, I'll just show you, there's the bit in. Um, this lock itself, like I say, it was, I got a couple of standard ones, they all came from Daz Evers. Thank you very much my friend. Um, he sent me these because I, I wanted to make some challenge locks out of some kicks and this is what I did, this is what I decided to, uh, usually I make my own pins and that and thread the cores and the, the bibles and that but this time I want to show that you can do or you can make a challenge lock without using threads or making your own pins so what I'll do is just go to the top of the keyway and I'm going to use a, a deep hook because I've got faults I've got um, an old set trap in this number uh, one pin fits right there as you can see that means it's it's pushed right up to the top it's uh, the it's the highest point in this one, but you can avoid it and go around that first pin. So we've got a click off at number five, a little bit of a rotation, a little click off four. I've always set that straight away. Let's start that again. There we go, we've got a little turn of the court and a little click on number five. A little click on four. A click on three, and we've got a bit of a little bit of turn of the core. So as what we've got now is a little bit of a false set. A click off two and another drop. And another drop, there we go. So now we've got quite a deep fault set. Now number one, I still haven't touched the pit itself. So we'll go back through them. And see what is free. That was number one. What I'm looking for now is some counter rotation. To 
love for a reset on that. I've, uh, I think I've uh, overset myself on the overset trap. Start at five, a little rotation. Three, little ro counter rotation. We've got a uh, false set back again. Now we've got the f deep false set back again. So now I'm going to go through all the pins and gently look for some. See if we get any counter. We have a little bit of counter now. Oh, and there we are. We're open. Now that was a lot trickier to pick than it was from uh, a standard lock. And this is the bit. What I mean? Well, I will show you why and how easy it is to make a challenge lock without having a Dremel or a tap and die set. Right, well we've got the key so we can lock it back up. Let's get the clip off. And the good thing about it is if you're gonna practice making your own challenge lock, I start with a very easy lock to pick. And then what I would do was, uh, I'll, show, I'll show you now, let's, uh, now the thing with this one is, you can see that, there's an indentation there, that's where the clip, top of the clip there, clicks in. If you gut it and turn it this way, the pin's going to drop straight into it and then you're lumbered, you're going to have to take this plate off the bottom, separate your lock. So, uh, see, there we go, we're in the right place. Right, this was a, this is a five pin, it could be a six pin, but the key, um, even the tip of the key, if I put a really long pin in there, it, it's got make no difference, so it could stay, it stay like this. Right, what I mean is, right, first key pin, these are just all standard key pins, these, I haven't changed anything about that. Obviously, if you've got the tools, when you can't, you, obviously you can do, you can put serrates in them, you can do all sorts to them, even turn them into uh, uh, key T pins, all sorts. So as you see, absolutely nothing in that. Completely plain. Uh, the key pins as well, I'll show you them in a second. Now what I did to change this lock is, let me change the follower because this is the one with the, with the hole in it. And they'll all just fall through. There we go, that's the right one. So, the first one is a standard driver, and that is the fault set, the fault set one. Give me, uh, sorry, give you a, uh, an overset trap, that one. Second one is a spool, and it's a commercial spool that I put in. The third one is a barrel pin, steel barrel pin, a bit like a, an ASA one. Then I put a another commercial spooling and another asser now for the moment I've uh, left the springs exactly the way they were not touched them and if you look inside this you can just see uh, I've done nothing to this neither this is complete standard stock and so is the uh, cover now I'm going to show you the pins Like I say, they were all originally standard, and all I've done, I changed it for a, a Yale spool. We've got a barrel, we've got another Yale spool, and we've got another barrel. That's the only things I've changed, these four pins, which have caused this lock to change significantly. From a 30 second pick to, uh, well, it took me five minutes to pick it. Um, depends on your skill level, some people pick it quicker, some people take a long time to pick it. But... Um, with these little grooves it's going to be really nice uh, feedback and I knew what was going on because I was, well I knew where they were but this is how I, um, oh, camera's falling over always going wrong for me this lately that's my son's rubbery green one <laughs> right um, what we'll do is I'm going to put all the key pins back in and I will show you what I mean. What you do is, when you've got your lock and you've uh, gutted it, 
like I say, if you haven't got if you haven't got the tools to do a tap and die set to do any uh, threading or make your own, you can make challenge locks just by using a collection of pins or other pins from other locks, as long as they're security pins. Right, so as you can see, they're all deep, and you put the key in. There we go. So what I'll do is I'll put the uh, I'll put the uh, standard driver in. Now watch how low that driver goes. That driver, that one doesn't even actually have to be picked. That's why it's a fault set. It's a fault. Uh, I forgot what you call it now. I'll give you a minute anyway. What I'll do is put the spool in there and as you can see with the spool you know it's going to work how it's going to interact because it's nice and deep you know it's going to catch when you turn the core like that and then as you push it up and it clicks out you're going to get the uh, counter rotation barrel pin in there and another spool in there And the barrel pin there. As you can see, they will all interact with the with the core and the barrel. But you, like I say, you can swap them around. You can put that there so it gets that click, and you can put the spool in there because it will interact. And you could put them in there. And now I put it in that order, it will now again pick completely different. The interaction will be totally different. Um, and as you see, there is a driver there, but the driver, the driver is perfectly level. So you don't actually have to pick that, because when you put that key in, you'll see that driver. So they, they will interact with each other very nicely. And what I mean is, uh, it will make you a, a perfectly nice uh, challenge lock without using, like I say, without any uh, the need for making threaded chambers or uh, making your own pins. All you got to do is have a couple of old locks with security pins, take them out, and make sure you put the driver pins in and drop your uh, drop the key pins in then drop your driver pins in to make sure they're going to interact or how they interact with the core like these do but um like i say so it does work perfectly fine that way you, you saw me pick it it took me uh, about five minutes but now i've swapped these around i'm going to get a total different feel now and I'll get the four sets in a different way and that's the one, the first one, it's an overset trap but um, yeah, like I say, so I hope this helps um, if you need any, uh, you want to ask any questions just send me an email at leonslockpad at gmail dot no, leonslockpad at gmail dot com there we go <laughs> but um, like I say, yeah, so this is just to quickly show you how to make a challenge lock if you don't have the tools to make your own pins or your own threading. You can do it and you can make them challenging even if the bitting is boring. Because if you're going to moment the key, nobody knows um, what the bitting is going to be like until they picked it and they took the key off. But like I say, it does work well and you can make yourself a, quite an interesting challenge lock without the, uh, the need of all the tools. But... Uh, well, I hope that was okay. I hope it helped you in any way. And, uh, well, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. Um, bye. Don't forget to like.